Good evening and welcome to the Galaxy's Edge podcast. My name is Walt and we need you to grab your mags, lock down your kit, get your ass in the seat and lock yourself down because we're going to launch out for some cool Galaxy's Edge discussion tonight because tonight we have special guest star, John Doc Spears. How are you, sir? Good to be with you, brothers. Oh my God. I, I love when you come because you add some semblance of legitimacy to our tiny little show. Phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're right. all in trouble then uh-huh uh right next to me is my partner in crime the guy who uh runs this show behind the scenes and makes sure that i don't look like a complete and bumbling idiot we have dark ops daniel i've been dead to the world for the past week playing cyberpunk 2077 that's why i have this because i'm too lazy to go shave so underneath your uh underneath your hat do you have a pink mohawk no no all right that's because that, of the glitch, right? You, you yeah. can get the pink mohawk? No, no, it, it, it didn't work. Because when you put the hat on, uh, your character always shows up as bald. <laughs> right uh, I resisted buying that for my boys for Christmas. I just thought it was a little much for six-year-olds, so, you know. Yeah, that, yeah, that would have yeah. been a lot. Also on console, it's been it's been having a rough, uh, rough time, but PC, it's been a lot better. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah Sony um, just gave something like... 200 million in refunds uh, because of uh, it's not working, <laughs> especially yeah. on their new platform, the PS5. Microsoft uh, also just started doing something like that as well. They're uh, setting up a system to start refunding on uh, Xbox and stuff. So oh, nasty. Well, well, the other thing is that they straight up pulled it from the Sony store. Yep. And they're like, nope, it's only coming back if you uh, if you fix the game. And it's like, oof, that's yeah. big. So, speaking of fixing things, we have Gamma, Dark Ops 9102. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm ready to roll. Right on. We love to hear it. We have Dark Ops 1879, Caveman, who's going to make us laugh and make us listen. Oh, oh, oh. I don't want to know. Nope. Nope. <laughs> no self <laughs> No self-gratification on this show. But speaking of self-gratification, we have Dark Ops 626, High Powered, who's going to be our featured insider today. Pleasure to be here, assuming my microphone works. Yep. You are working. We can hear you. <laughs> yeah. Five by five, all, all uh, lickety chicken. Uh, and uh, by the way, have you have you ever gotten in trouble, uh, John, for going on radio and, and saying something other than Lima Charlie to uh, you know to let them know that they could hear you? I, I never talk on the radio to anybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm like, in SF, you've got a commo man to handle all those menial <laughs> Right on. Right on. I said lickety chicken once, and man, I. It's, it's and the like, hate just poured out from everywhere. Oh, my God. <laughs> you, know, you know, something, I'm sitting there and I'm smiling, and, and uh, the, the E7 that's just like ripping me up is just like, what are you smiling at? I'm like, right now I'm embedded with an MP unit. And uh, I got to tell you, this level of hate makes me feel like I'm back in the infantry. He's like, what is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> oh, uh, Walt, we, we did have another uh, featured insider. That's uh, George. He's actually in the green room right now. Oh, I can see him. Yeah, he was underneath oh. my stream. Hello, George. Hello, George. George, George be broken. <laughs> Go catch up. Go catch up. Yeah. Oh, wait, is that oh, him? No, I got voice. George, say, some, say something funny. But you also have to be unmuted. Bark twice if you're in Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, while we're waiting for George to uh, unscrew uh, the nuts and bolts, can you uh, can you talk a little bit about what's been going on in Discord this time, Daniel? Uh, yeah. So the Zulu Squad stuff or the, the Zulu development, the game that we we're working on, uh, that kind of fell by the wayside for a bit. Um, one of the developers, the main developer, coder guy, he, he kind of got burned out, but, um, noob, the guy that did all the art for it, he's repurpose, repurposing all of those art assets and bringing them into another game with, uh, another person. And so we'll get something moving on, on, on the front there. So that's cool. Uh, we got people that are, you know, they're finishing up docs books. And uh, there, there, there's people who are like, oh, Kel is just, he's just such a perfect, you know, pro tag or whatever. And I'm like, oh my God, whatever, you know. <laughs> so is he too perfect? Is that what they're I, saying? I guess they're saying he's too perfect, but 
you know. Yes, yes. Dude, dude was like on the verge of of like of like burnout in in the last book I read. I know, I, was like, I know, that, and I'm just not, like, yeah. but okay. <laughs> Oh, we'll we'll address that that noise. Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daco, Daco, Daco attack uh, will, on all fronts. I will, I will crush people's terrible criticism. You know, they're impatient. <laughs> you didn't give us an entire character story arc in like only one book. Yeah. Uh, uh, deep breathing. One of the other things that we've been working on, uh, or or has been seeing a lot of uh, uh, a lot of activity. Honestly, throughout the holidays, surprise, surprise, is uh, the squad support channel. So we got people that are, you know, always, uh, you know, lending an ear or some 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 semblance of uh, advice to get through a tough time. And so that, that's nice to see, you know, people are willing to, to speak up or or provide other insights and stuff to try to work through some tough bull crap. Well, yeah. That's uh that's that's pretty much it for Discord. I actually had somebody reach out from from like uh in regards to the podcast and they were like um uh you know you should go on the uh they actually <laughs> like directed me back to the Discord. They're like you should go on this on the support channel they have on Discord cuz uh they could help you with your stutter. I'm like what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And you're rookie. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna work on that." I said, uh, "Can you dress funny too?" Right? I said, I, <laughs> so "I wrote back, yeah, I'm gonna work on that." Um, do, can they do anything for my club foot? <laughs> so I really, I didn't know where to go with that, but uh, yeah. Um, so uh, in the uh, in some of the fan group, I got to tell you, like some of these some of these Lego things that uh, that. Wow. Uh, the Leech Go stuff. Have you guys been following that? I've seen a couple of the pictures on that. It's really cool. Yeah. Holy hand They're grenades. Weird, right? You, you got right. some of the images up? Uh, yeah, I can bring them up. But, like, uh, yeah, yeah, fabricating Legos to, to go, like, absolute, like, mayhem on, on stuff is just, come on, launch all the way. There you go. That's a good. Well, while he pulls up the images, George, did you get your audio sorted? Oh, yeah, it's working right now. Perfect. Right on. Oh. Right on. So yeah, we got, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Nothing like a sniper Lego. <laughs> Fun fact. Uh, if you create a, uh, a creation with Legos and submit it to Lego, you actually get royalties if they approve it. Oh, that's crazy. No I'm oh. not even joking. That's an actual oh. real thing. Wait, Dude, we got to get Nahum to, to, to do that. Hell yeah. That'd be badass. Yeah, he's, he is. He is a talent. Uh, I, that that blows me away. Absolutely blows me away. I don't. I can't draw stick figures. To look like <laughs> stick figures, and he's out there taking Legos and recreating covers and scenes. He did all kinds of scenes from Rebellion, which totally blew my little mind. Uh, I'm still jazzed about it. Guy's talented. You know, I got to tell you that um, uh, so far. Um, uh, Rebellion's really been my my favorite Dark Operator book. Um, thank you. Thank you. I just it's fun. I just love that whole embedded culture. You know, like like uh, you know, we're not just we're not just going to drop off a bunch of guns and tell them to go. You know, have a nice day. Good luck storming the castle. We're going to live with them, immerse ourselves in the culture. You know, I just uh, I don't know. That's that's like my jam. That's that's like that's like geek candy. You know what I mean? And, and well, uh, uh, part, of, part of I've got a, some, some people on uh, like the insiders on Facebook or even just on the, the G page on Facebook, ask questions about those things like that. Within everything I've, I, uh, I always try and write a different mission set because part of the whole, part of the whole reason for dark operator is like explicating I don't, that's not a real word. I think it's a neologism or it could be a real word, but I'd, I'm always trying to explicate what special operations actually is and why you have people who do that and what those skill sets are. And it's not like, you know, and it's not, you know, knifing people, you know, in the throat and, you know, and stuff. It can't, you know, that's a very small, small part of it, but, but, uh, Unconventional warfare, special reconnaissance, training, you know, foreign internal defense, uh, you know, counter guerrilla, counterinsurgency, 
direct action, you know, uh, CT, all of those missions are all part of it. So uh, Rebellion was a lot of fun because anybody like, you know, anybody SF who's had to go and like spend like, you know, three months, six months, nine months, a year, you know, working with taking one group of indig and like working with them and getting them up to a point where you can actually take them out on operations. Uh, it's a, it's a big part of your life and you remember those people forever, you know, and you meet some really great souls and you meet some really wonderful people who, you know, deserve a dirt nap. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, what did was there a certain mission that you guys that you guys went through that that kind of uh, informed uh, rebellion? Well, you know, I'll go the the historical background of that for anybody who's who's you know a little bit savvy is of course uh, it was a retelling of the Sepoy mutiny. You know the 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 rebellion that formed modern India, and all of that. But so that's the historical setting and the precedents. But all of the things that pretty much happened, like like I never had a group that I worked with like turn on us. We I actually was on a mission once where we were pretty in a in a mid South American country bordered by like. Brazil and Ecuador and Peru, who shall remain nameless, Bolivia, who, uh, <laughs> we, were, who uh, we were very close to like enacting our E and E plan because the people we were working with were so unreliable, uh, and there was a point where we were abs absolutely assuming risk to the team was coming, and and we were we were within about a week of like of like enacting our E and E plan and just getting out of the country on our own. Uh, but uh, I'm trying to think there are other things in there, but there's just things that like happen to you in the course of who you're dealing with, the people you're working with, the civilian populace that you're working with, the things that you're trying to trying to uh, manage between those two and, uh, you know, the powers that are running them all. And then the, the people you're working for in the State Department and the OGA people who are coming in, you know, Trying to trying to either micromanage what you're doing, or they want to see you the first day you're in country, and they want to see you on the last day in country. And between those two, they don't want to know anything about you. And uh, sometimes that's actually best. You know, it's like most of those missions are also they're you know they're what we call band aid or body bag. You know, whatever you do is cool. What, whatever happens out there, if it can be fixed by a Band-Aid, life is cool. If it can be fixed by a body bag, life is cool. They'll, they'll work with you on that. It's all the in-between stuff that happens where, you know, they, they don't want that to, to be known that you were out there and that Americans were out there getting involved in things, and that creates issues. So, you know, as long as everything is Band-Aid or body bag, you know, they're very good, you know. Or, or but, uh, you know, the, the dreaded is also, you know, is, uh, you, you know what, you know what PNG is? Yeah, you know, Walt does. Persona, get named persona non grata by the, by the foreign mission, you know, so there's all kinds of reasons, you know, someone, someone on this panel, he will remain nameless, John Spears, was uh, <laughs> supposed to be named persona non grata in a very high vis country for like an altercation with a, a Department of State person where that person may or may not have been hung out a window for calling me a slack jawed troglodyte. Wow. You know? Great oh. reviews. <laughs> so 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 that 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 was uh something that that you were hearkening back on for for your book. Uh, it's somewhere in there. Yes, I say most everything in the books has happened to me to close close friends or or people I've known and it's getting to share a lot of you know, fun experiences and things. There's stories that it's great to be able to help them uh, see the light of day because if trying to tell them in a in a nonfiction way, uh, it would it would not work out and it would make people very unhappy. You got to hang out with like giant bug people. Yeah, <laughs> you get impressed. Katie and I had flew in space and I shot lasers. Did you do a halo jump too? Wow. Oh God. <laughs> so, from orbit. When do we get yes, from orbit? Blasters? 
When do we get what? When do we get to see his blasters? I need to know. His blasters? <laughs> uh, well, um, uh, if you give him your address, he can send you proof of concept at over 500 <laughs> meters or more. Um, so I'm pretty sure we can we can arrange that. It's all fun. Well, it's like I say, it's, like, you know, not, not advertised. But if it's things you're interested, go to uh, the Forge Tactical page, F-O-R-G, Forge Tactical. That's uh, our company. So uh, this is the time of year where I, we take a few months off because it's winter. And nobody likes being in the shoot house around the range where half the country is in, or more is in winter. Uh, but uh, or the face, go on the Facebook page, scroll through there. You'll see lots of lots of blasters and and daring do and things like that. That you know that's that's one of my day jobs. Pretty good. But today today was a, today is a day off. I spent the day on the twelve hundred yard range. Uh, nice. Doing doing my thing, having a good day. Winds picked up about fifteen to. 20 miles an hour, but I got to try out my new uh, uh, battery powered socks. <laughs> like, like, I got battery powered socks. 15 degrees, I 15 those degrees like out. I'm in Missouri and uh, and I bought them in the summer because I, I was just scrolling through an Amazon. You know, they had the best, you know, you know, winter sport like skiing, best for family fun, but feet get cold, less fun. So use battery powered sock, more fun. And, uh, oh, careful, careful! And you're stealing caveman's you're, like that, so you know you're stealing well, his, his, his cave. Yeah, yeah, they were completely yeah. understand. Caveman sounds like Google like Translate. <laughs> no, no, he he speak caveman like caveman. Caveman now want electric sock. Caveman <laughs> want <laughs> no, that no caveman speak cave, caveman speak caveman. You know, Chinglish is a is an entirely different deal. But a good Chinglish <laughs> Chinglish advertisement sells me every time. So. I, I like that Milwaukee 12, uh, 12 volt fuel socks in the chat. <laughs> so uh, we have uh, we have a book dropping on Monday. I understand. We do Exigency, which is book four of Dark Operator, uh, hits Monday. So I know people have been pre ordering it, and the insiders have have read it and said really really complimentary thing. I I think that. It's just you got to read book four so that you'll enjoy book five. Book five, I think, is uh, my personal favorite so far because I got to play in the Battle of Sidon from Order of Centurion. Uh, and uh, that's that's 60 percent of the book is Dark Ops role during uh, the Battle of Sidon. So. Get through book four. Not that you won't enjoy it. You will. There's. Uh, I take it in a different direction, and I do a lot of things that haven't been done before. It's very much uh, intelligence operations uh, within uh, high threat environment. Uh, and uh, I don't want to give too much away, but you get through that, and then you get back to book five, and it's just real hardcore uh, you know, real hardcore dark ops stuff of guys out doing what you want to read about them doing. And then they get to go to Sidon and kick off the whole uh, Republic's invasion of Sidon and uh, and what they do with the Doros. And it's it's kind of cool. So I don't know when book five is going to hit. It's been done for, for months now. Uh, I, I just assume sometime after the first of the year that they'll announce the release for book five. Uh, February 23rd is what... Uh Amazon is saying. Oh no, kidding! You see that uh, that always blows me. That the author is always the last to know. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, that brings us into another section that Walt skipped over. Because how dare you, featured insider? Well, no, I was. We were just bantering, and I was going oh, to get okay. back to the feature. Don't worry. I, uh, uh, this is my path. I know the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, but. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, John's pointing, so he's in charge. We'll get to the featured insider. <laughs> we would all be in trouble. Yep. So, uh, um, you know, seeing as uh, at our guest's insistence, uh, Hi Powered, uh, who are you and uh, what's in your wanted poster? So, my name's Hi Powered, uh, based off of the Browning High Power, one of the first pistols I'd own. Very nice. Uh, God's good. chosen pistol, even though the Mormons may be a cult of Christianity. Uh, God did bless John Moses Browning with the golden plates that had the designs of the M2 Browning machine gun and the Browning high power. You officially have my attention. That's a very good explanation 
for it. You know, he he is he was certainly the most gifted person of his century and beyond. You know, a guy who could take, you know, who built weapon systems of complex, hardened geometries that just work and work and work and work, and they're still out there working. And yeah, something like a like a high power is a uh, is a treasure of those of those complex hardened geometries that uh you know just brings a lifetime of pleasure so yes you choose very well my friend as a i used to be a machinist as of right now i am a glorified janitor which leads into my wanted poster uh i am wanted for blackmail because being a janitor for a high-ranking uh house of reason official I discovered upon his computer because he forgot to, you know, close it down uh, a bunch of compromising pictures. So I simply shrugged to hit the reply all button <laughs> and then walked away. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I, I was like just hovering over the end broadcast button. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to get arrested. This is not how it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Delete my browse history, <laughs> right? That's, so, yeah, that's my that's my medical alert bracelet. Is please delete my browser history. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! The uh, 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 how'd you get into GE? So uh, I feel like as the uh, normal path is, uh, uh, I started listening to. I discovered RC Bray and uh with expeditionary force i i like the book series although i've kind of fallen off of it because of its um the narrative structure kind of rinses and repeats itself a little too hard after the fifth and sixth book um and so on the recommended section galaxy's edge comes up and i'm like oh you know i've got a amazon credit so i mean i might as well burn it you know no big deal and the next thing you know, I, I end up listening to essentially, uh, I think I listened to the first four books of the mainline Galaxy's Edge series, essentially within two weeks nice. while I was at my uh, inspecting job. And uh, so I was measuring stuff down to uh, a half tenth out of an inch oh, and wow. uh, and listening to that, so it was a good time. Uh, currently on the Dark Operator book, after uh, Rebellion, the name escapes me right now, unfortunately. It's the third book. Is it? Uh, is it No Fail? I think it's that one. I My memory is nowhere near as good as I'd like to think it is. It is No Fail. Um, no, I, I, I do. Somebody knows. I just write them. I don't remember. <laughs> I, I do have a complaint to levy against the series, though. Uh, Lieutenant Chun needs some tail. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Don't get, you think he has get, much get more to work? Get that boy laid. No. Get that boy laid. He's too high strung. I mean, you know, I'm assuming spoilers are okay here, though. But uh, with that one dark, with one nether ops chick that got turned into a robot was like the only romantic lead that he had, and you know that just got thrown out the window because now, you know it, it's it's not good for OSHA to um to fist <laughs> robot girls. Now, now hold on. Uh, and Dean has not actually been confirmed killed or uh, alive at this point. And there's a, uh, there's a high probability that she's maybe making a return in season two from what we hear. And I mean, let's just think about it. You know, oh, she, does have you? A, she does have her own side series now too. Yep. I had nothing. You're making yeah. Cape Man lose money. Cape Man is so, losing shiny rocks. Propaganda. But yeah, I, I've I've read. Uh, oh, I say read. I uh, listened to uh, the Savage War series. Uh, I enjoy uh, Tyrus Rex and his wanting to desire to simply throw uh, pocket nukes at things. Uh, very, uh, you know, recreational thumb thumb nukes is. Uh, I can appreciate that. Uh, I also enjoy the uh, the A team that he forms around him, especially um, John McAfee. Uh, it's McAfee's kind of surprising dying. that uh, he's able to that he's been able to live so long and escape prison. Yeah, and there's always that one guy. Galaxy's Edge universe. Um, but yeah, no, I, I enjoy the series. Uh, whenever I pitch it to people, uh, I always say it's like uh, just just imagine like Star Trek, but it's uh, written by like an Iraq War slash Desert Storm veteran. If I have to do the one sentence sales pitch. 
And as a man who's uh, sold guns for six years of his life before landing this current job after getting laid off from the oil field, uh, it's a pretty decent sales pitch. Right on. What, uh, have you read the whole series? Uh, unfortunately, no. I've read the whole mainline series, uh, but I'm still slowly working my way through the side series. So with my job, I'm able to listen to a lot of audiobooks and podcasts. So I kind of got to change it up. You know, one week will be podcasts. Next week will be audiobooks. So Right on. What's, uh, what's your favorite book so far? I would say... I forget which novel it is in the mainline galaxy's edge series, but it's the, uh, it's the big spaceship battle and it's the, uh, the one like overweight captain that hooks up with the, uh, the, the, the hot major. alien chick. Yeah. The major, I, it's, it's that book right there. Attack of shadows. Yes. It's that one. I feel bad. Like, like names and everything. It's like the same thing with songs. Like if someone held a gun to my head, it'd be like, name this song. And I'm like, you're going to have to shoot me. Cause I don't know. Even if I like have the song on my iPhone or whatever, it's like, I could tell you like the band or the name of it. Now who's your favorite character? Uh, I would have to say it's a coin flip between Wraith and Chun. Um, Wraith is the quintessential Giga Chad of the universe. <laughs> Giga Chad. <laughs> <laughs> <Funny. laughs> um, Luke, yeah, I can uh, see that. <laughs> Chun is is definitely more relatable. I mean. He's just like he's like okay I've I've done a good job and I've ended up becoming in charge of the legion because I've done such a good job um and he's just like man I sure would like to go out and like kick doors with my team but I have to do paperwork and sign off on things so Ugh. it's kind of it's kind of an understandable thing uh mm. with Wraith you kind of get the the battling personalities. It's like, oh, am I Wraith or am I uh, Ace and Keel? Assuming I got that name right. So, and especially whenever he met the princess, and he's like, wait a minute, everyone's a princess back on your planet. Like, had that was a that was a good gag right there. I had a a very good laugh from that. You know, uh, as an insider, you can apply to um, get on the team to read the current draft of. Uh, the first book of the second season. Yep, that's a, that's a current thing that just uh, that. Um, In fact, Jason, Jason just hollered out at people. He's wanting uh, proofreaders right now. Some, yep. some people on this panel have read it, and oh my god! <laughs> I, I wonder if that would be you. Oh my god! I just I, I was like, oh my god, this is this is better than like rainbows and unicorn giggles. Oh my god! I don't know what to do with myself. It was it, oh. oh, oh. Anyway, uh, speaking of not knowing what to do to, with myself, uh, this is when I defer to my blunt force segue. And uh, since we have another featured insider, how about we kick the mute off of his microphone? And uh, let's see, uh, George, who are you and uh, what's on the wanted poster? Hey, uh, I'm George. Uh, that's about anyone knows. I kind of just there in the back. Uh, I don't even know how I'm here. No, you're here. And we can hear you. <laughs> no, no, I mean, like, I'm, I'm talking about my my whole thing. Uh, there's absolutely no backstory. Uh, I'm just kind of there. Nobody knows why I'm here. I don't know why I'm here. Uh, my so, wanted poster would probably be for, like, drug possession, but they weren't even my drugs. Nobody knows why. <laughs> <laughs> These aren't my That's pants, it. officer. Right, they're not my pants. <laughs> These are That's not it. my pants. These are not the pants you're looking for. Uh, possession is nine-tenths of the law. Right. How'd you get into GE? Uh, listening to Expeditionary Force, much like the other guy. Uh, uh, Christ. Um, R.C. Bray narrates Expeditionary Force, and because of that, Galaxy's Edge was in my recommended. I like exclusively listen to audiobooks, so we got the first one, and it was good. So then uh, I proceeded to listen to all of them within the, like literally every book within the course of around six months. Wow. Uh, and then, of course, after that, I had to listen to them all again. So, uh, like you yeah. do, yeah. Because uh, they're not they're not coming out fast enough for me to read them all in a, or listen to them all in two days. So, so did you uh, did you do all the side series books too, as, uh, in addition to the mainline ones? Yeah, I believe I've listened to every single book except the um, Last of Us. I think I can't remember what it's called. Best of Us. 
Best of Us. Yeah, I haven't listened to that one, but I've listened to every other one probably twice. Oh, wow. Nice. Wow. Right on. You got a favorite book? Um, it's probably either or it's probably Legionnaire or uh, Through the Nether. Right on. Yeah, Through the Nether was tight. Yeah, that was. Yeah, Nether Ops, uh, uh, much to uh, Nether Ops Matt's chagrin, does not get enough love. Uh, what uh, uh, what's your uh, favorite character in the series? Probably Tyrus Rex. He just kind of is there, and then he goes shoots bad guys, and that's about all he does. Uh, and then he dies at some point, um, <laughs> like we all do. Wow, gee, yeah. spoiler! Wait a minute. <laughs> Tyrus Rex dies. I thought no, he doesn't were die. Loud. He dies. He dies in a video game. Don't worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was worried. I haven't got that far yet. Oh my god. Um, uh, <laughs> other than GE, what kind of what kind of trouble do you get into outside? Really, I've just been listening to Expeditionary Force Galaxy. I've just been some other one-off books. Um, like uh, I believe I listened to uh, Tinderbox. I don't remember the full title, but. Really, it's just yeah, like this is an expeditionary force. Yeah. What do you what What do you do? Uh, like uh, in real life, though, like do you do uh, like uh, work at a job? Scrabble. Yeah. You know, football. Well, uh, you can't do that now. But man, yeah. I feel cheaty. Y'all didn't even ask me that. <laughs> well, <laughs> you You already told us that you had worked in an oil field, and that uh, for the last six years you had sold uh, you had sold firearms. So we didn't have to ask you. You, you volunteered told us that information. Yeah, it's yeah. Totally you're not you're not holding the information back like George is. George is good. <laughs> yeah, we even, we even ask about my hobbies. I posted my expensive carbon fiber bike in the Discord. Dear Lord. Yeah, those things those things are not cheap. Well, it's like, wait, you want me to buy you want me to buy a Prius and condense it down to pedals? Nah. <laughs> so go ahead, George. Uh, so actually, it's 16, so I don't have a job. Uh, I do Civil Air Patrol, which is very roughly compared to Air Force or DC, and that's about all I do. Uh, that's cool. That's very so cool. Given that, you thinking about signing the line when you uh, get the other side of 18? Uh, I plan on trying to go to a service academy, and if I can't do that, doing ROTC somewhere in uh, University of Texas, and then joining the military in whatever. Brand. Are you a Boy Scout? Uh no, I nah, I'm just not a not a boy scout. Oh darn, I was hoping we had another Eagle Scout on the chat. <laughs> no, I know a few. Uh, you're an Eagle Scout? But... Yes. Uh, oh. Right on. That's cool. I had a I had a buddy I was in SF with who who started out same thing in high school with Civil Air Patrol and somehow it's like he was still doing Civil Air Patrol. He joined the reserves. Oh. And he got a slot to Ranger School through CAP. What? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. He got a slot to Ranger School through CAP. You know, it's like after AIT, you know, he, he went back to the streets. He said, hey, we got a slot for Ranger School. You want to go? He goes, yeah, sure. You know, why not? You know, <laughs> he went through and he's, you know, uh, like a type 2 diabetic, you know. So, you know, it's like, hey, man, I got to eat. And goes like, you know. Here, you know, toss him a toss him a can of sea rats and go. That that'll keep you from dying, you know. Hump oh that rock, boy. <laughs> so dear Lord. Crazy. So yes, all all kinds of all kinds of interesting things can happen from the Civil Air Patrol. Apparently, <laughs> I couldn't even imagine that conversation with the RI when you get to in processing. Yeah, it's like, dude. Yeah, I'm in. I'm the Civil Air Patrol, man. <laughs> <laughs> Holy, okay, well, doing my like best. That. Very interesting. That's crazy. Strange um, things happen in the world. Uh, using the powers of my blunt force segue and your uh, ability to uh, throw it down, like you know, strange things happen in the world. Uh, I want to talk about tactics a little bit in the book. Um, mm. You see, see a lot of different tactics that go on in, uh, uh, especially in rebellion, uh, when they're working with indigenous forces and and trying to explain to those indigenous forces why they're doing what they're doing so that they can do it on their own without the operators. Uh, John, what do you think of uh, some of the tactics in some of the main series um, and, and how it relates to like real world tactics today? Uh, God, I'm trying to think of a, any specific example that stands out. You know, the thing that where I was, one of my personal favorite out of many personal favorites is Kill Team. 
and it is the and it is the following our deep cover agent as he infiltrates the intergalactic arms ring uh and that that duality of having to live that split life and maintain a cover and do all of that where i get in where for for me that's is like hardcore i think you know uh, you know, art imitates life or vice versa, uh, which I think was super cool. So maybe not like hardcore military tactic kind of thing, but I just found that that whole, that whole character that, that Nick and Jason did so well still fascinates me. And of course that character has a very, very, you know, important role to play throughout the rest of the season uh, that you learn later, but still that's one that, that sticks in my mind. Tactics and writing tactics for me, it's pretty, you know, uh, where I just, when I'm sitting down and I'm writing something, I'm, I'm trying to communicate something that, that I have participated in or something that happens or the kind of, or the, or the kind of things that, that go down, you know, uh, 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 book three, no fail. The first half of that is I'm very much recreating the mission of Special Forces Debt A in West Berlin, which is something I've talked about before and everybody should should read about. But working in that kind of a very high threat, high vis environment and 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 conducting a full on unconventional warfare mission well in advance of any sort of conventional troops is a uh, is is a uh, incredible capability that we have people who who train for that as a full-time mission and that only comes up once in a blue moon for somebody to actually to actually perform that mission uh but it's actually something that is being performed right now as we speak in different countries in the world by by people who that is their full-time job uh in place doing uh doing uh you know denied area recoveries of of uh, essential personnel in distress and things like that and right like i say right now as we speak there there are teams all over the world who do that as their full-time mission you know and they are living that cover in that high vis high threat environment and uh working at all levels with host intelligence agencies working against them uh doing so with support from you know our own assets and and things like that so it's like i say for for me a big part of that is always trying to write a write a scenario in which uh uh it, it just follows that history always repeats itself. The mission is always going to repeat itself. Those missions are always going to be there because they've been there for thousands of years when you look at warfare in the shadows. And uh, I've always loved that best about, about science fiction and people who write military science fiction who just say, you know, it doesn't matter if it's 2,000 years in the future and we're fighting dudes with eight tentacles and uh, you've got, you know, <laughs> colonists on some planet you know that are that's a billion light years away from any kind of support and those same kind of missions and the same kind of requirements and capabilities are going to exist for somebody to solve those kind of problems no matter where or when they occur so that's that's always the challenge for me is not you know trying to create something that like is just unimaginable, but rather say, here's something very, very real. And here's why it's going to exist at some other point in future time. Right off. Yeah, Daniel. So um, because Walt wanted to talk about tactics and stuff like that, I wanted to hit you with something, Doc. How would you write a scene where you have to use a box of Tic Tacs in a tactical application to eliminate a target? Hmm. <laughs> you know these green beanies live for these questions, right? Yeah. Hey, your breath smells bad. Unzips gun shoots. <laughs> well, certain, certainly, you know... Historically, you could look at that there are many, many attempts in uh, 
in covert operations to try and take out a high value target through a mechanism that involves complete plausible deniability so that there's no trace back to who the actual actor was and trying to poison somebody is a big one look at look at you know how the the soviets took out georgi markov in in london you know a dissident who uh, they were very much against and they poisoned him with a you know a little little bitty microscopic pellet that was loaded with polonium i believe that yep. they injected into the target through the tip of an umbrella walking down the street in london i and thought i was in his tea they got into his tea or something like that um that was i don't think that was the georgie markov incident you know they pretty much proved later because you know on post-mortem they found this little bitty microscopic multi-faceted pellet you know with with little channels in it and proved that it was loaded with polonium you know extremely radioactive deadly material you know and uh totally foreign body you know how did it get there you know right, that's you know that kind of ruined their plausible deniability it had to be the russians <laughs> but, <laughs> but you couldn't say exactly who did it but there are many many examples in the history of covert operations where exactly you know you can look at cuba in the late 50s and 60s where you know the where the historic cigars about like trying yeah with the poison cigars and things like that so Tic Tacs as a weapon. First of all, it's all about target analysis. Who is your target? <laughs> you know, is our is our target somebody who we could insert a, an agent? You know, preferably a honeypot, uh, to uh, to enter into a romantic engagement with the target, and that mm. we get the target, uh, uh, you know, hooked on the delicious treat that Tic Tacs provide with minty fresh breath that <laughs> could poison the Tic Tacs. And, and eventually that's how, that's how our deep cover agent, you know, gets our target by eventually substituting in the poison Tic Tacs or, you know, in the future, it'll have to be some kind of nano agent, right? That's the, you know, that's like quantum, you know, yeah. you just substitute the word quantum or add it to anything. And all of a sudden Dark it's matter. I do the same thing with nano. <laughs> Nano, the the nano poison tic tac. <laughs> I him. take it, or maybe the nano explosives, so that when he's when he gets through the the minty outer shell of the tic tac, that the saliva releases the nano explosive and it blows out his his neck as he swallows it just below his epiglottis, and it's powerful enough to take out his carotids. You know, I think it's just amazing that you said minty fresh breath. I just, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you got two choices as far as I'm concerned. You got, uh, you know, Copenhagen mint pouches, which I'm doing <laughs> right now, or you have a, uh, or you have Tic Tacs. Right on. You Man, know, uh, whatever I used to chew, it was Redmond Gold Blend or Levi Garrett's. I'm glad <laughs> I kicked that habit. Good. Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm one of those. It's like, if I'm on the range or if I've got, I'm in the shoot house or I have a fishing pole in my hand, I have to have some kind of dippage, you know? And, uh, there's this very special, when I'm in Alliance, Ohio, the, the, uh, uh, head of the, the special response team at Alliance police always makes sure I'm loaded up with a great big fresh pouch of, uh, this loose leaf tobacco called moonshine. <laughs> which is which is right it's like that's why i'm very disciplined only if i'm on the grounds of alliance will i allow myself to dip loose leaf tobacco and it is a and it is a wonderful treat in fact that's why i have to keep classes going in alliance almost all year round just so i can so i can get some moonshine to dip <laughs> that's awesome it's almost all of my motivation actually so nail bender in the youtube chat says skull long cut for the win uh, no disagreement there. I will dip anything. I will dip any anything, especially if I'm bumming it. If you talk was, to JR, uh, he uh, he dipped coffee when he was in. in uh, that's right. Iraq. Yeah, he was telling. Uh, he was saying, I think in a previous podcast about how he would take the uh, the, the instant uh, coffee and and then uh, yeah. I will say this: the uh, the CBD dip pouches are pretty nice. I've, really? been, I've been doing those. I'll just put like two or three of them in whatever. I'm about to play me some airsoft. It's uh, it's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
uh, another I had no idea it even existed, but it does not surprise me. Wow, wouldn't that make you really sedate? Like, oh shit, I've been shot. It makes me. It, it's it's not. It's just you don't want to be too tight. You just want to be. Uh, you want to be snug. Uh, well, I mean, flip crazy. side, there are like two different blends that would give you different responses. One will hype you up. The other one will cool you down, kind of thing. You know, craziness. Being in Washington, I would know about that. Right, if you're doing it for like super soldier, like pain control, so you can fight through being wounded multiple times, then that's that's pretty admirable. Is there anything like that uh, possibly featuring in a future Dark Operator book? Not a chance. <laughs> oh, I thought that was really cool. And what was it? Uh, one of the uh, was it Madame Guillotine, right? Where he ends up uh, using the the one stem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, uh, the thing I, I was really interested in is uh, in no fail, you have uh, uh, you know this very uh, dedicated mission in the front of the book. Uh, you know, once again, harkening back to the missions that they had in Germany back in the day, um, but then they get yanked, right? They get yanked because you have a specialist on the team or somebody who's perceived as a specialist because of his prior. Um, um, his prior acts being so celebrated, you know, Kel is just this, this, um, he's a very motivated thinker and he likes to think through his problems. And because of that, he's had a high success rate. So mm -hmm. they, they co-opt him for this no fail mission and, and drag his entire team along for the ride. Um, has that happened to you in your career where all of a sudden you've had a change of mission and they pulled you from whatever you were doing to go, hey, this we need you on this specifically. So your whole team has to come. Um, I have. It happened to me actually several times where I got pulled from team missions to go on individual missions elsewhere. I was pretty – so, yeah, there is there is a little bit of inspiration from for, for some of those things from my own life about, like, getting pulled from the team to go do something as a, as a lone operator, which happened to me very, very frequently, which is a drag. Being away from the team is – is it's that double-edged sword that I try and capture and write about, you know, you're being with, with your, with your team or the closest people with you in the life. But at the same time, the distinction of being pulled out for a lone mission is, uh, is, uh, is a great honor, but it has a ton of challenges of just being by yourself without anybody else to rely on. And that's that that's happened to me several times. Uh, you know, where my team just wished they were getting pulled along to go with me. <laughs> right in some really nice third world cesspool. Well, where, I, where I went to a slightly better part of another third world cesspool. <laughs> One where they hopefully had room service. Yeah, well, it's like I I was I was on one mission that ended up turning into like a six month mission where I had a uh, where I had quarters that were you know State Department you know like foreign Ser foreign service officer level quarters where I had my own private whack and hut security and I had three maids and you know you know three hots prepared for me like six days a week and and things like that and that doesn't come up often and when that comes up you just gotta roll with it baby it was it, oh it must have been terrible Yes, it was. Actually, there was a lot about that mission that was terrible, but it's like, you know, I did, I did get back up to weight by the end of that, you know, after like, you know, a couple of years of like, you know, every parasite and, you know, in a viral infection a guy can get, you know, and losing like 40 pounds or at the end of that six month or I did put back on about a good 25 pounds just from the magic of being able to eat like two or three times a day, which is, which is a lovely thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, what the, uh, in uh, a lot of the the, uh, the mainline series, um, we have uh, movement to contact. So the team, uh, either under Chun or um, uh, you know, uh, when Wraith is kind of pulling people along, uh, they encounter situations where all of a sudden they encounter an enemy, then they have to react to that enemy and try and uh, gain momentum so that they're not reacting, they're acting. Uh, so that that is a common uh, a common element in the first uh, series 
before they get into some of the big battles like um, the battle on Ankalor and stuff like that. Um, what are some other type of military actions that you'd like to see uh, going forward uh, enter GE? Um, you know, something like, uh, like, I don't know, wedge, room takedowns, stuff like that uh, versus, uh, you know, just uh, standard movement to contact. Um, those guys leave that up to me in all of that. <laughs> so, you, know, or I've, uh, you know, that's like a lot of say a lot of our a lot of our initial association was them tapping me for technical advice about about things in general, uh, which is which is always a great honor to be asked to to, to participate in that. Uh, uh, you know, and 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 uh, like other series, you know, and uh, and uh, uh, you know, high powered was bringing it up. It's really tough for an author where you're looking at doing a multi uh, book series to not repeat yourself, you know, right? To not end up doing the same thing over and over again. And you know, for all of you who've done it, everybody knows it's like there is nothing particularly, you know, uh, uh, new and original about like, you know, and uh, we call them battle drills now or what used to be immediate action drills. You know, it's like, you know, you know, battle drill three, you know, respond to ambush, you know, you know, not not to, you know, assault a trench, you know, to, you know, take a room, you know, all of those things, you know, doing those battle drills over and over and over again, you know, really close friend of mine who the guys used uh, for a lot of technical uh, information for uh, uh, for the guy's new project uh, for uh, Forgotten Ruin, you know, Chris Sizelove, you know, Sizelove spent his entire career in 75, uh, in the 75th, and, you know, and we, over, you know, a, a dozen years, you know, compare notes, and it's true, and I know Walt relates to that, you know, it's like, 75th, you're going to do like, you're going to do like three or four things and you're going to do them over and over and over and over again. And you're not, and you're going to do them better than anybody on planet earth. And that's just a fact, you know, whereas like, you know, you know, it's like I say, my buddy Chris will talk about, and he's like, yeah, you know, it's like somebody who, you know, left 75th and went to SF. And when you link up later and go like, oh yeah. And then, you know, like I, my first mission in, in SF, you know, we were in like, you know, some Central African Republic, you know, doing river Rhine patrolling, you know, it's like, we would never do that in 75th, you know, you would never get to do that, you know, it's like, uh, so there is a lot of variety in that, but when it gets down to, it's just the nuts and bolts, doesn't matter how speed you, how high speed you are, doesn't matter how many tabs or how many schools you, you've been to, you know, it's like exactly like movement, movement to contact, you, you know, and, and anticipating, uh, you know, a, a hostile force being there for you, you know, it's pretty much done the same way. May look a little different, like, right, you watch Saving Private Ryan, where, you know, I'm told that the, you know, the technical advisors who did all of the actor training and the tactics and things like that on the spot, you know, that that's pretty much, they did everything is like two columns, two columns. You know, the wedge didn't really come up as an infantry tactic until very early Vietnam. You know, in very early 60s is when the infantry school started teaching the wedge as a movement formation. But I mean, guys in World War II, they still, they just did it differently. They did things in two columns and they still did, you know, you know, a, a, a base of fire element and a movement element. And they still did, you know, a traveling overwatch and a bounding overwatch. They just called it different things and it just, and it just looked different. But that's, uh, you know... The, the things that's interesting, I, I haven't had an opportunity to write about it uh, or play that through. I don't remember if I have or not, but we used to do a lot of what were called peelbacks. You know, like Walt, I didn't know if that was if that was a deal for you at the time. Peelbacks is a way of uh, breaking contact within an ambush where, uh, you know, from where you're at or coming online or you're in a wedge, where you're laying down as much fire as you can and then guys you're trying to get out of the kill zone and guys one or two at a time are dumping a basic load of ammo and they're and they're taking off on a different azimuth and then another pair of guys or another single guy does that and you get out of there and it's like that's a thing like we used to practice a lot you know or they used to call it the australian peel back because apparently the the aussie sas uh developed that as a is a technique in 
Vietnam, you know, I mean, people were doing that. They just didn't call it that, but it's the same thing. You know, whoever, whoever, uh, uh, is in the kill zone and is farthest ahead, dumping a basic load of ammo. Uh, we all used to carry like smokes, you know, usually taped on the handguard of our 203s or our car 15s. You dump your basic load of ammo, drop a smoke to get some, you know, obscuring element out there while other guys are doing the same thing and try and break contact and then you know, figure out your distance, direction, you know, description, figure out if you're going to continue to move out of the area or if you're going to try and get a better angle on the aggressor and then try and assault through from a different condition. Uh, so, you know, there's just all kinds of things like that on the ground. And it's real easy when you're writing something to say like, oh, God, I can't I can't write the same thing. Not only does nobody want to read it, I don't want to write the same thing again. <laughs> a different element in there, uh, you know, so that both me and the reader are not bored to death. And for, for, for somebody like me, it's easy to, to think about that most of the time. But there will certainly come a point, uh, you know, in my own writing career where it's like, I'll just go back to like book three and I'll just take that scene and I'll just rewrite it because it's the, same, it's the same damn thing over and over again. That's how it is when it's, when it's, when it's, you're shooting at them and they're shooting at you. That's what the two, the two way shooting range is, of course, but we get to use all kinds of cool technology. Oh yeah. Yeah. One of my, one of my original, uh, one of my original team daddies uh, used to say all the time that a firefight is the same thing over and over again, just with different profanity. So as we're getting closer to the end of the hour, I want to actually ask the uh, the guys on the panel, do you have any questions for, for Doc before we, we maybe consider wrapping things up? I mean I, you got the you got the man, the myth, the legend right here. I, I, yeah. I do, yes. All right, Doc. Five I'm, four five by thirty nine or five five six by forty five. Uh you know, I mean, there's just there's just not a lick of difference between everything. You have to look at something as the effectiveness of the system rather than the the individual round. You know, the terminal performance of almost any round is so amazingly the same in human tissue. You know, uh, it's that same argument that like, you know, uh, that 762 is a better killer than 556. You know, there's there's like an author uh, is a very great, a very great author. I love all his books, but you know, he goes to, to great lengths to disparage like five, five, six as being like a Barbie gun and things like that. <laughs> or like, you know, hey man, to wound. you know, it's like nobody, nobody gets shot with a 308 and just like expires on the spot. You know, it's like the only, the only weapon system that will flat out like in the fight with one shot is a 50 cal. Anything short of that, you know, if you don't put it where it needs to go and keep applying that paradigm until the threat stops, it doesn't matter what size hole you're punching in them. It's totally inconsequential. So, uh, you know, what the military is looking at now is the next <laughs> level of individual and squad automatic weapons is moving up to like 6.5 or 6.8 or something, all that. We oh, like really crazy, more stuff. Yeah, well, they've got the uh, like the 338 Norma Magnum, too, also for the machine guns. And I think which, the main which, driver uh, for that is body which, armor. Yeah, yeah. Working, working with uh, working always with the idea of like a. Uh, uh, superiority, you know, that overmatch, and you can argue whether that's a, a valuable term or not. I think it, it, it provides something good to work for is working at a peer level engagement, you know, certainly something that has such a, a fantastic extended range and a better terminal performance like that 338 light machine gun is going to do something absolutely awesome for capability. But when it gets down to what we carry as individual assaulters, you know, I've I've humped a 308 a lot, and uh, there are probably theaters and places where it's a little better suited. But when you know when I can carry you know you know four or five hundred rounds of five five six, uh, you know I usually feel better suited to choose that weapon system. 
And even then, like, you know, it's like I say, if you're thinking like, is an AK-74 a better killer than a, than an M4 with 5.56? You know, it's it's the weapon system. The things that we can do with an M4, our electro optic systems, anything like that, make it a way superior system. The ergonomics of the M4 family of weapon system is the the finest weapon system that we're that we. It's going to take a lot to do something as well or better than it. Caveman, would you like to know how to uh, tactically implement a rock? Um, cavemen think, oh, well, I'm pretty sure the audience are wanting caveman to speak in his special voice. So, <laughs> caveman is really, uh, I'd prefer ketamine Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't understand the last word you said. <laughs> um, I, I, I think the only thing I would have to ask you, Mr. Master Doc, is, um, is book five going to be the last book we're seeing with um, your Dark Operator series, kids? I just started No Fail. Um, I had to pause it because the latest book for Expeditionary Force came out. And I love Galaxy's Edge, but I cannot get enough of Skippy the Magnificent. So, that accursed beer can. How dare you? He will smite you from, from where? Good. How, how, whom, whom stith doth thou thinketh thine be? But, uh, it's me, uh, high powered. Uh, <laughs> is is this going to be? Is uh, book five going to be the end of uh, our 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 solo hero? No, not by a long shot. It's, All right. Uh, not but not 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 by too much of a long shot. There's uh uh, it's like I say, there are uh, there are two more full. A six and a seven that are all mainly, you know, I just have to finish writing them, you know. So six and seven are absolutely will be out in 2021. Jason, last time we were together, Jason teased the other book that I had to I had to take a break from Dark Operator to write another book for the guys uh, that they passed off on me. And Jason, Jason teased it last time. It's called Tier 1000. <laughs> but it's a non Galaxy's Edge book. Uh, that I had to take a, a break from to write, and it uh, it's uh, it's turned into a, a, it's a it's pure military science fiction, uh, but just the the setting uh, is quite a bit different. It's like a lit RPG novel. That's actually what they got tasked to write, and uh, and Jason pitched me the idea, and I had to say it's like I don't like lit RPG. I think they're terribly boring. Oh uh, man. So, so, uh, uh, so I wrote it uh, in a little bit different way, first person, uh, where it occurs in the not too distant future by a soldier who's in a police <laughs> direct force who, uh, Jeez. who uh, comes from generations who fought in the GWAT, which is called the Long War, and he uh, dies in a very spectacular fashion and wake and wakes up in Valhalla. And, uh, and is sent on the task of being an eternal soldier to fight across all times and in all sorts of scenarios to to continue to make himself the ultimate soldier. So I get to play in past wars. I get to play in current wars. I get to play in future wars and uh, do all kinds of things like that. So tier 1000, I'm putting the finishing touches on it right now. And it'll go out to edit in uh, January and then, you know, get produced and do all of that. So I've got another project after that that uh, has been teased, which is the uh, which is uh, if any of the insiders have read uh, Forgotten Ruin, uh, yes. I, got, I got tagged by the guys to write the, the parallel story to Forgotten Ruin in that same setting so as soon as i have those commitments done and out uh book six and seven a dark operator will will take off and uh and there's going to be more even after that so so no book five that's a long long answer but yeah book five is not the end to kel turner and uh in his adventures so if, i have a i have a question about what you're writing and and forgotten ruin but 
I can't ask it on the air because it'll spoil a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> so uh, in that case, uh, if George, uh, do you got any questions? Yeah, I got one question. Uh, do you plan on writing anything in the Galaxy of the Universe other than Dark Operator in the future? Um, just as it comes up, the thing is, is there's a lot of tie-ins. Like there's this whole question is the characters of Doc and Chappie got introduced in all of the contracts and terminations books. Uh, and then the big secret fan theory is that like Kel Turner becomes Doc at some point. <laughs> so there's a, there's actually a big tie-in that's going to happen in season two between for what happens to those characters that have already been introduced, which are Pyrus Rex's like covert support, you know, from his dark ops buddies, Doc and Chappie, and and uh, where the Kel Turner connection comes in. I would so geek out, like jumping up and down and squeeing like a little, like a 12 year old cheerleader. Uh, if you would write, a Doc and like Doc and Chappy, right? As like the grizzled old veterans, kind of like Tango and Cash, going to going to like all these different missions. That would just be amazing. It it'll come up. Well, it's funny. It's like you know, it's like the 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 Doc and the Chappy, my Chappy, John Chapman from Forge Tactical. We got made characters in the GE series while I was writing Dark Operator One. You know. So there's always been this thing hanging over my head. It's like, well, what do you, you know, what are you going to do with that? I just like, think it would make a great series for like, for like a secondhand lions kind of deal, you know, where like all these young kids are like, oh, I'm young and a legionnaire. And these like, and you know, these guys who are, who are uh, no longer of that like young military age. Cause I mean, you know, most military guys these days are in between, you know, 20 and 40. You know, but you got guys who are north of that just sitting there, you know, and just rocking stuff and going, hey, if Keanu could do it, who's Keanu? I don't know. Well, the the real the real life, you know, allegory to that is you got guys like I don't know if you've ever heard of Billy Waugh, Billy Waugh, SF legend, who was one of the first guys into Afghanistan, uh, you know. Uh, Billy Waugh had been a lifelong SF operator, and, and I think he did five or six, maybe it was seven consecutive tours in Vietnam, most of those with SOG. And oh when he finally retired, he went into civil service, finished a master's degree, did all kinds of other amazing things before he got the call from those other guys and went back to be another guy. And then he ended up as one of the first Americans on the ground in Afghanistan, getting things ready for, for SF to infiltrate and over there. And Billy Waugh was in his seventies when he did that. You know, I just finished, you know, we talked about the last time we were together, I was on my way to Phoenix for the 50th anniversary of the Sante raid. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was just the week before Thanksgiving. And I was in Phoenix celebrating that anniversary with the Sante Raiders uh, and uh, with those great guys. And a lot of those were guys who I knew back in the day as a young soldier is them being the legendary soldiers, uh, which very much so. So it was great to see all those guys, Jake Jacobenko and Tyrone Adderley and just these total studs, famous, famous guys wonderful human beings, you know, who, like I say, uh, just, oh uh, yeah, that's a scene right there. There's Dave Hall, uh, who's, uh, running some of the actors through, uh, uh, there's, uh, there's Tyler there, one of our own legions and, uh, uh there's Max Mullen and Dave Hall and, and Dave Hall, uh, with, uh, uh, with, uh, Terry Buckler, Sante Raider, who is out there, but all these guys are, like I say, they're all in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, but like, come, Tyrone Adderley is, oh, good God, I want to say he's 80 now. Tyrone is still an employee of the Special Warfare Center. He is still a trainer at, at the JFK Special Warfare Center. He uh, uh, He's a G chief for Robin Sage, which is kind of like the culmination of, unconventional warfare exercise in SF training in the Q course, Tyrone Adderley at 80 
is out there, you know, like five, six times a year out in the bush playing gorilla chief for, uh, for students going through the, through the Q course. And like I say, he's like 80 years old. So, so it, it very much in reality, people who spent like a lifetime as special operators, uh, a great number of them, you know, take a well-earned break, a great number of them uh, are still working in other capacities, doing doing what they've done for a lifetime. So, so yes, the Doc and Chappie are out there somewhere, you know, doing doing uh, grisly, angry old guy stuff, uh, and showing up. Uh, book book five is it? Book five? Yes, book five. I have very much the same scenario going on with some characters who were in book one who in all the cutaway retro sequences where you get how Kel Turner came to be in Dark Ops, how he came on the Dark Ops radar and the team that he was working with doing ground force protection, who kind of noticed him, who figure he's a good guy. Two of those characters come back in book five is the grizzled old retired guys who are now employed by somebody else who've been sent in to uh, unscrew the pooch for Kel's kill team who are uh, who are messing up by the numbers? <laughs> All right, Gamma, your 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 last one. Talk about an AOA membership right there. <laughs> oh God. Uh, any advice for an inspiring writer? Books are written one to two thousand words a day, right? You know, uh, I'll tell you, yeah, uh, uh, like it's with so many things in life, my paradigm is uh, I function like the underpants gnomes. You remember the underpants gnomes from South Park? They had a three part business model. Number one, steal underpants. Number two, Number three, profit. <laughs> you know, right? It's like they steal underpants. Somewhere at step number three is profit. Step number two, you know, they had no idea. So it's like Nick Cole and I, you know, by, by different parallel routes have the same writing process. I know the start. I know the end. What happens in between those two, it just comes out on the keyboard. So what I'm saying is, uh, uh, yes, it helps to have a rough idea. You got to know where you start. You've got to know the setting. You've got to know the characters and the story you're trying to tell. And you got to know where it ends up. But you don't have to know every step in between the way. When I sit down at the keyboard in the morning, I don't know where it's going to end up by the end of the day. You know, I don't. I sit down and I write. And it might be you've got the day where it, you'll have the occasional day with four or 5,000 words where it was a six, seven hours a day where you just couldn't put that keyboard away. Sometimes it's that's five or six hours of work where you've ended up with 1,500 words but you told a good story and you've gone through and you figured out how to do something different. And, you know, uh, and that's just how it is. And sometimes you'll get, you know, 30, 40,000 words later say, I need to go back to that first section and I need to do something here and here to make it more interesting for the reader. So it teases what's going to happen six chapters later. But what I'm saying is there's no substitute for just sit in front of the keyboard and make yourself right. And if you got 1,000 good words today, if you did that every day in 10 days, you'd have 10,000 words done. If, if you did 1,000 words a day in three months, you'd have 100,000 word book done. The next step after that is have a professional editor. You know, uh, I know there's a huge amount of uh, people in our in our Discord community and our fan page community that actually do uh, like to do fan fiction or writing just on the side, and so that's actually a great question that you asked, uh, Gamma, and and I, I guarantee you that a lot of fans are going to be taking some uh, Doc's advice to uh, to heart. You should write. Writing is. Uh... Uh, you know, it's a terrible, uh, it's a terrible addiction. You know, when you're writing, you're, you're pulling your hair out and you're just saying, oh my God, this is the worst thing I've ever written. It's like, I'm embarrassed. Nobody will ever want to read this. 
But somehow you get through it and you keep plowing on and you make it better and you make it better and uh, and you just keep trudging on. And, and that's that's what it's all about. And uh, you get one to bed and you've already got three or four other ideas for the next one and you immediately start on the next one and you get a day where you're not writing and you say, oh my God, I feel so guilty I'm not writing. You know, I'm not getting it done. Uh, so it's a terrible addiction. So be care be careful about wanting to write. That's all I got to say. Be careful about wanting to write because anytime you're not writing, you're going to feel guilty. And before I give the, the reins back to Badger, because I know he's itching, um, everybody, Mission 22. Uh, no, no, not Rocket Propelled Cat. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the, the, the Mission 22 update is... Uh, Jason crunched the numbers and it came out to eleven thousand over eleven thousand oh, yeah. dollars that we donated nice. uh, through that entire month of fundraising and stuff. So uh honestly guys, that's a phenomenal number. We we did great. Um I look forward to seeing what we can do next year because you know, every one of those uh donations that we did, um, that's gonna help out a veteran that needs some help and getting through a tough time. So you know. You're doing your part in helping uh, helping save a life. So good on it. Yep, yep. A lot of people, a lot of people talk and don't do. Nick and Jason do. Mm -hmm. and, and the other side of that too is if you know a veteran who's having a tough time, grab a copy of Legionnaire or Dark Operator, stick it in their hand, and then drag them over to Discord or the, with a fan group or something like that, and uh, and and just show them that they can they they have a community. And they have a place where you know you don't have to feel like you're the odd man out, um, and and just sit down and talk. You know, you talk about the books, you talk about whatever, but uh, you know the the easiest way easiest way to to sink under your own pain is to swim it alone. And mm -hmm. you know if you if you're swimming with a buddy and you get a cramp and things are not looking good and you're going under the water, then uh, that buddy is there to save you. You know if you're if if you're swimming it alone and something goes wrong, it's just you against the ocean. And sometimes, sometimes that math doesn't always work in your favor. So, do do the right thing. If you if if you see something, say something. But if you're feeling something, say something as well. Because you know the world is a better place with you in it. And you know the only way we're going to get more GE is if you read it. And if you're not here, <laughs> you can't read it. Um, to tack onto that, yeah. Uh if anybody needs uh, the book, let me know. You know, I, I have a list of, of codes that I can give out. Um, if you guys are looking for a specific one or something like that, I can, I can get a hold of Jason and we can get this book, these books out to people who, who need something to distract themselves. So yeah. Um, I'm on discord as well. Uh, and, uh, I'm, I'm very easy for you to, for you uh, to tag and, you know, if I don't respond immediately, usually I'll see it and I'll I'll, I'll be there to, to talk. And yeah, as as Ken says, you know, and as Jr. would would say if he was here right now, I know he's he's busy driving around, but uh, do be do be kind and uh, speak your mind on the reviewing platforms. I know I didn't hit as perfect as he does, but uh, but you know, I'm not yeah, outstanding. Yeah, Ken was channeling his inner Jr. <laughs> Um, but real quick, I want to tack on to this whole, uh, you know, if, if you're feeling down and uh, talk to someone up. I heard a lyric from a absolutely ridiculous metalcore band. And uh, the best way thing to say is, uh, you know, if you're feeling down and you think, ah, oh, man, you know, I want to leave. Just think, if you don't buy these uh, Galaxy's Edge books, you know, the authors, they're not going to be able to eat. And they are going to go hungry and it will be <laughs> your fault. That's great. Would you, would you really want to live with that on your conscience, knowing that because you're not buying their books, <laughs> they don't for the low, that. low price of ten dollars a month, you two can afford an Audible <laughs> subscription, and you'll be able to feed a Galaxy's Edge author and their editors. All right, I'm going to solve this right now. Right. Also, also oh. the merch. Yeah, the merch, cool merch. Right? But I'll solve this right now. If you need, if you need an immediate Galaxy's Edge fix because you're having difficulty, you know, adjusting to whatever, let me know, and I will volunteer 
to make JR read the books to you. So that's oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. That's not right, man. You can't just you can't you can't do that to him. That's that's dirty. I can volunteer anybody I want to. Uh, yeah, we're trying uh, to hey, make side a, a less attractive option. <laughs> hey, Doc, thank you so much for coming out, man. We really appreciate it. Love, love being asked. Love being here. I would, I would, and I, I would love to be here every week. You have an open invitation. You want on? All you got to do is let me know. Very kind. Very kind, Sweet. my brother. Speaking about every week. We are actually skipping next week. Uh, that is going to be our bye week because it is um, something going on. Yeah, yeah, something's going on. Some holiday there or is something a like that. Travel tournament. I must attend. Yeah, th this guy in this in this communist red outfit is going to be crawling down some chimneys and giving away things. I don't know. It's odd. I, I these people they're they're so weird. That's why I like <laughs> sci-fi. So, I mean, if he brings me a pivot switchblade. He could be as <laughs> communist as he wants. <laughs> so I'm, I'm the ups socks. Yeah, the upside is uh, this is our last show for 2020. It's it's been wow. a it's been a shit year. <laughs> that's that's my one swear for this show, um, and I and I and I feel like a lot of people agree with me on that. But we made it through it, and uh, I'm thankful for for Walt in in being the the main host that has been keeping us going. Um, and I'm thankful for Jason and everybody. So yep. Yep. we're all going to be returning January 1st. And uh, I believe Jason's going to be on the show. We're still working on the, the specifics on how we're going to do this, but we might be having a, a pseudo insider version of the show first, and then we're going to go public for the rest of the people. But we're still working that out. But keep your eyes open, because January 1st, that's when we're going to be coming back. Excellent. Excellent. And Von Gunther needs surplus 7.62 for his uh, FA foul. I miss FA my foul. I miss wait. it a lot. Guys, I'm going to shut the curtains because you know I've been uh, I've been on my feet for many an hour. Uh, mm -hmm. But I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, thank you to uh, High Powered and George uh, for coming out and being our featured insider today. As uh, we said before, Doc, thank you so much, brother. Really, really love Always. having you. Oh, we, uh, we got, it always seems like we've got a million things we, we uh, want to hit, so we just have to get together more frequently. That's all there is. Hell yeah. You can't, don't you threaten me with a good time. And then, uh, uh, yeah, because when, when all this silly silliness uh, winds up, um, uh, get together, maybe throw some lead down range, grill some burgers. Amen. Either that or... Uh, KTF. Either that or go CTF, you know, cavemen them first, and we can go like bow and arrow style, <laughs> you know, or do some like craziness like spear fishing. I'll uh, accept well, bow, bow fishing on the Missouri oh, River. Oh, yeah. Yes. Cooked in fish. Oh. Now you're talking. Bow fishing uh, is the absolute hoot. But until we can, we until we can uh, string up an arrow and uh, hook us a fish, uh, you know, the caveman way, uh, we want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, just remember, um, uh, uh, if, uh, if you, like we said before, if you see something, say something. Uh, but that being said, uh, there's a lot of great content coming out. So, um, galaxies as insiders just had the option to beta read, uh, the first book in season two, and it is glorious. Oh my God. Glorious. Just the first, just the prologue alone. I was I was giggling and kicking my feet and I work around a bunch of truck drivers and they, and they were just like, are, are you on drugs? <laughs> you can't be here if you're on drugs. So um, that being said, there's a lot more coming. There's a lot of great content. We got guys like doc. We got guys like uh, Michelle C Myers, uh, who is not a guy, but you know, uh, infantry, uh, infantry chick. So it counts. Um, but they, uh, you know, they got a lot of great content coming out. So if you thought, uh, you know, the previous years were fantastic, um, you just, the stuff that is coming is just going to blow your brains right out through your nose holes. And with that, I am going to click the button, say good night, and uh, you guys uh, make sure you clear your corner.